Hey my friend what's up you are going to learn one important concept of object oriented programming in python in this video constructor all you have to do is spend few minutes of your time on this video and after you are finished watching this video you will feel as if you just own constructors time is important hence let's move forward to learning constructors for which i'll head to pycharm now and you should open the same in your machine because coding along with me is going to help you learn the concept better if you don't have pycharm installed on your machine then you can watch this video in the i button which i have made on how to install pycharm on mac also if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet then do hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon because that way you will keep receiving videos that i make on python programming and you will never stop growing in python so let me tell you first whenever you are asked about a constructor then there has to be a class and an object around constructors are special methods that in other object oriented programming languages are used for object instantiation and for initializing data attributes but in python the interpreter does the object instantiation itself and constructors are only used for attributes initialization so this was a little bit of theory now let's understand how we can initialize attributes using a constructor by declaring a class first so the class that we are going to create will be named alter ego i'll put colon that's it the class is created now let's code the constructor in the class i told you that the constructor is a special method so it has to have a name in java or c sharp the constructor's name is the same as the class name but in python the name of the constructor is always in it with double underscores in the beginning and in the end let's write uh, the constructor then so i'll use the dev keyword because constructor is a method and uh, dev keyword is used to write a method in python then like i told you i am going to write in it pycharm does the work for me now pycharm automatically put up the self keyword for me what is the self keyword let's leave it for a while and continue with the constructors don't worry you will come to know in some time what's the meaning of the self keyword i'll explain you each and everything we'll initialize a few data attributes over here which we can do like this so i'll make use of the self keyword and the data attribute that i'm going to put will be iron man and i am going to initialize it to tony stark and then i am going to initialize one more attribute which will be the city in which iron man lives so let me initialize this data attribute to malibu all right so our constructor has been created now we'll create another method to print the names of these avengers and their alter egos or is it the other way around okay so let me write def keyword and we'll name this method as print avengers bracket given self keyword is automatically populated we'll write print within brackets we are going to write a message like iron man is parameter brackets comma he lives in again curly brackets for the second parameter then we'll write format and within whose brackets we'll pass self dot iron man comma self dot city that's our two data attributes now in the main function we'll create the object of this class so i'm going to type main and let me create the object of this class so i'll name the object as avenger i'll use my class over here alter ego i'm going to provide brackets after that and using this object avenger i'm going to call print avengers method let's run this program and check the output there you go the print function printed the name of the iron man and his city which were actually initialized in our constructor also called the init method in python this brings us to an important learning related to constructors that a constructor is always called when an object is created 
Now it doesn't matter if your class has n number of methods, but the constructor will be the only method called when an object is created. Why not prove this fact by creating two more simple methods in our class? So it will be diff who is Captain America is going to be my first method. And within its body, I'm going to simply print Steve Rogers. And let's write another method. It will be diff and the method will be who is Hulk. Within its body, I'm going to print Bruce Banner. To crank it up a notch, why not change the order of the methods too? So let me put this constructor as the third function in this class. However, the standard is that you keep the constructor as the first method in your class always because it ensures better readability of the code and uh, it makes you look like a professional programmer as well. Also, let's make use of print to print one more message on the console so that it points out in a better way that a constructor is called. So within this constructor, I'm going to print constructor is called. There you go. Let's run this program and check the output. Okay. You can see that only the constructor got called and no other method was called. Like we had two more methods, who is Hulk and who is Captain America. They were not called. Otherwise, Steve Rogers and Bruce Banner or either of the two would have also been printed on the console. This message is being printed because the object has been used explicitly to call the print avengers method. Now, when we called the print avengers method using this object avenger, then how would this method print underscore avengers know which object is calling me? Here is where the self keyword comes into the picture which refers to the object that called the method. Since here the Avenger object is calling the method print underscore Avengers, hence you can consider this self keyword as a holder for this object only when the Avenger object would call the print underscore Avengers method. Let's quickly prove that as well. What we'll do that we'll make use of the ID function to print the unique ID for this object Avenger. And we are also going to pass the self keyword to the ID function. Now the ID function returns the object's memory address. So as a part of this experiment, the expected result is that the ID of this Avenger object and the ID of the self keyword has to be the same because self keyword, like we discussed, is a holder of the object that is calling this method over here. So let's do this experiment. So we'll write print within its brackets. We are going to write the ID function within whose brackets we will pass this object Avenger. And over here, we are going to write print within its brackets. We'll write ID function and we'll pass the self keyword. All right, let's run this program and we should get two numbers, one for the self keyword and one for the Avenger object. And they should be exactly the same. There you go. This ID over here is the ID of the Avenger object because that has been executed first. And when it called the print underscore Avengers method, this statement got executed and the unique ID of the self keyword that is a holder of the object which called this method is being printed over here and you can see they are both the same. So this proves and you should know, you should remember that the self keyword refers to the object that called the method. All right. This constructor that you see is the default constructor because it has no other parameters or arguments other than the self keyword which is a default method argument in Python. If we customize our constructor in such a way that we decide who Iron Man will be, then we'll have to make 
a change. But before that, before making that change, let's bring this constructor at the top. Let's make this as the first method of the class because indeed it is. The change that we are going to make is that we are going to make this constructor accept two arguments. So the first argument will be alter ego and the second argument will be city. Now the next change that we are going to make is we'll not assign Tony Stark to Iron Man data attribute, but we'll assign the value of alter ego argument to Iron Man. Okay, why it's giving an error because I missed typing E. All right, instead of Malibu, what I'm going to assign to this city data attribute, it's the city argument. Remember, this is the constructor argument. Remember, these are the constructor arguments and these are the data attributes, the class data attributes. This constructor or init method that is accepting arguments is known as the parameterized constructor. So earlier it was the default constructor type one, which we saw, and this is type two, which is parameterized constructor. This parameterized constructor also makes it necessary that we pass the alter ego and the city while initializing the object. Otherwise it will throw an error. Let's see what error it will throw. So what I am going to do, the object is already getting initialized over here. Okay. But no parameters are being passed. No values for alter ego and city are being passed. So let's run this. There you go. This is the error that it throws. This is the error that a parameterized constructor is going to throw if we don't pass the values of the required positional arguments. All right. So we'll have to pass the two arguments. So hypothetically, let's assume that Iron Man is Bruce Banner. So I'll write Bruce Banner and the city where Iron Man lives is, let's say Mumbai. Okay. Now let's run this program and check what's the output. There you go. The message changed. Iron Man is Bruce Banner. He lives in Mumbai. The constructor was also called. So the Iron Man has been changed to Bruce Banner and now he lives in Mumbai. The benefit of having a parameterized constructor is that we can create a new object and change who is Iron Man. So let's create one more object. Let it be common. I'll call this object common and then let's give the class name over here and within brackets I'm going to pass and within brackets I'm going to pass Joey and the city as Vienna. Let's call the print Avengers method using this object. And let's also comment out these two lines of code so that we do not get those unique ID integers printed anymore. Let's run the program. Constructor called it twice because two objects got created of the same class and it prints Iron Man is Bruce Banner. He lives in Mumbai for this Avenger object. And for this object that is common, it prints Iron Man is Joey. He lives in Vienna. Well, I cannot be Iron Man because neither I am a billionaire nor a philanthropist nor genius and in no way a playboy. Now there is a third type of constructor, which is a combination of default and parameterized constructors. To this constructor, if we don't pass the parameters during object creation, then it will use the default values. Let's change this parameterized constructor into the third type of constructor. All we'll do is assign default values to these parameters and we can easily do it over here by typing Tony Stark because he's the original Iron Man and the city, the default city as Malibu only. Okay. So let's test this out. During the creation of the first object, let's not pass any parameters, any values to these two positional arguments. And uh, in the second object creation, we are happy with passing Joey and Vienna as the alter ego and the city. Let's see the behavior of the program. There you go. After the first object got created, the constructor was called since there were no positional arguments passed. Hence, it used the default values and printed Iron Man is Tony Stark. He lives in Malibu. 
And just because we passed Choi and Vienna as the two positional arguments, it printed Iron Man is Choi, he lives in Vienna. Now, a constructor is not only used to initialize the data attributes, it can be used to call other methods as well. So let's call these two methods from within the constructor so that when the object gets initialized, these two methods are called as well. So all we'll do is we are going to write self dot first, let's call this method who is Captain America. And then let's call this method who is Hulk. Let's run this program and check. There you go. Steve Rogers got printed. Bruce Banner got printed. That means when the object was initialized, constructor was called and not only the data attributes were initialized, but these two methods were called from within the constructor as well. With this, we have come to the end of this video. In this video on constructors, you learned that constructors are used to initialize the data attributes of a class. A constructor is called when an object is created. You learned about the init function, the self keyword and the types of constructors. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any doubts, then put them down in the comment section. Like this video, share this video, tell people about this video. I look forward to helping you with Python programming and only for this video. Goodbye and take very good care of yourself.